Miss Arlene. Relaxing in the fun-filled sorority house of Tri Delta Gamma Omega, drinking her alpha milk and watching her Betamax. There were huge hits on the radio that weekend. Arlene was a devoted biology student. The only item on the charts for her was carbon. This weekend, Arlene was working on an important experiment that required her to have a dog lick a dish of Christmas candies so that they could stick together and become a wall hanging. But there were no dogs on campus, nor any nice china. Arlene didn't have any hard candies for that matter. Her mother, however, had all these things. We've used manufactured saliva out of a bottle for this project. Oh no, Samsonite's tongue will definitely be required. I'll have to return to my beloved hometown of excellent Alberta. The rumors of Arlene Bunn's family dog, Samsonite, being a hoodlum were rampant throughout the town of excellent Alberta. Yes, he did attack a small child once. Mrs. Bunn admitted. But let's face it, the kid was teasing him. Samsonite, Samsonite, where is thy tongue? Soon Arlene reached the rural setting of excellent Alberta where she was whisked inside the front door by Mrs. Bunn for a piece of cinnamon toast and a cup of homemade herb tea, which Mrs. Bunn affectionately referred to as the uncoffee. It wasn't long before Samsonite made his appearance and licked the candies. Things were going nicely when Dad suddenly piped up. This dog's smoting instinct was warmly regarded pertaining to the chandelier we acquired in our pillagement of the Bourbons in 1814. Oh, what a year under the tricolor that was for us. Where is my battle tartan? In the closet, dear. Are you ready for some nice white bread dipped in bacon fat? I want ham and eggs. Better bring the thermometer for Dad. He's looking a bit warm. All I have is the meat thermometer. What does it say? It says he's done. Well, phone the funeral home then. Hey, hey, wait a minute. Oh, settle down now. Look, I brought you your salmon eggs. Not salmon eggs. I said ham and eggs. <laughs> The trip home for Arlene Bunn from this point on would be somewhat anticlimactic, meaning the weather was to get worse and worse. She'd had enough bickering and decided to go to the local TV salon with her new wall hanging. She could impress her hometown friends with her biology handiwork and brush up on current affairs. But like many people who rely exclusively on the TV salon for contemporary information, Arlene Bunn couldn't tell a head of state from a head of lettuce. When she returned home, her mother sat her down for a serious talk. Arlene, this is a good home that we've allowed you to grow up in. We've provided good food, clean clothes, and the love and support that only a mother and father can give. To be frank with you, I'm afraid that the artistic ability you've inherited from me is being squandered on too many far-out ideas. Now, I myself, on occasion, am known to lollygag around the house eating candy floss with my rubber gloves on from time to time. But this business with my Christmas candies and Samsonite licking them is going a little bit too far. Why don't you take up a sensible craft? Here, in fact, I'd like you to take home this lovely decoupage as a free gift. Uh, thanks, but uh, no thanks, Mom. But I'll tell you what, I'll try to act a little bit more sensible from now on. No more weird experiments? No more weird experiments. Will you promise to behave more normally in the manner of your parents? I promise. Well, now that everything seemed to be all right between mother and daughter, Arlene offered to round up the whole family, dad and Samsonite, so that mom could lead the group in a rousing rendition of one of her old Kingston trio favorites. It seemed to be the perfect gesture of love and forgiveness. Great. The acoustic guitar is right here, but tell you what, just for a change, let's all sing along nude. Mm -hmm. 